Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Stay Healthy San Diego podcast brought to you by Parker Physio, aimed at helping you live an enjoyable, fit, and healthy life in and around our community. And now, introducing your host and author of Aging Smarter, Dr. Matt Parker. Hello, and welcome everyone to the Stay Healthy San Diego podcast. Again, it's your host, Dr. Matt Parker, physical therapist and owner of Parker Physio here in Encinitas. And 2019, quickly coming to a close. So it is December, I'm frantically rushing around, trying to figure out Christmas presents. It is getting pretty hectic here with the end of the year, trying to figure out 2020 plans. But I've been doing a little bit of reflection and decided to do something a little bit different for this episode of Stay Healthy San Diego. I wanted to actually do the... Kindle, or excuse me, not the Kindle version, the audible version of my book. I want to do the introduction in chapter one. And the reasoning for that is with more and more time, and I talk to more and more people out there and my patients currently, they tend to have the exact same questions. And I want to be able to address those questions. And I think if I can give you guys more information, you can actually end up making a better decision about your health. So I'm going to go ahead and read the introduction in chapter one from my book, uh, bestseller on Amazon, Aging Smarter, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Most Active and Healthy Life After 50. Introduction. Your golden years. These are the years that are less focused on career accomplishments and more on leisure and family. It's a time for interacting with your loved ones and enjoying different activities, trying new hobbies, and traveling to dream destinations. Whether you're already in those golden years or you're slowly approaching them, there are some disturbing trends, especially for those over the age of 50. People are struggling with poor health and chronic pain that is limiting their ability to be active. It stops them from living a mobile lifestyle. It affects their independence and overall quality of life. Worst of all, many people, many people believe it's normal. Many people just accept it or ignore help from experts because they believe it won't work for them or because they believe their problem is somehow different, and many people give up. Poor health and chronic pain normally develop because of one reason, decision-making. Deciding to hit the snooze button on your alarm instead of waking up to exercise. Deciding to take pills to mask pain and stiffness. Deciding to eat that extra piece of cake or drink a soda when you're trying to stick to a better lifestyle choices. Deciding to take advice from a friend or family member instead of a health professional. These small decisions over time can lead to heart disease, diabetes, unnecessary joint surgeries, a dependency on medications, and other health problems. Your chances of maintaining independence and mobility while living free of painkillers will always come back to these decisions. When facing them, it's important to have reliable information from a specialist, and that's what this book is all about. This book is for those who are looking to better understand their bodies. It's for those who value their health and plan on being active and independent into their 60s, 70s, and beyond. It's for those who are willing to put in the time and take action towards becoming the healthiest version of themselves. It's to help you age smarter while avoiding things like pain pills, injections, and surgeries. There is such a vast amount of information on the internet and YouTube that it can be difficult to decipher what information is actually true and what isn't. This book was created to provide more clarity. The information and recommendations given here are are not conjecture. Everything is based on the exact methods that have helped hundreds of my patients get incredible results. However, this book was not created to diagnose yourself. It is for those that feel stuck and have, quote, tried everything without getting the solutions that they're looking for. It is written to help guide you on the path to better health without using complicated medical and anatomical terminology. I can't make any big, bold guarantees without knowing your exact health background, but I can tell you that after reading this book, you'll have much greater clarity. My goal is to give you quality information so that you can have confidence in making the best decisions about your health. The advice given in this book may not be considered sexy. There are no revolutionary techniques to acquire better health, just simple guidelines that are often overlooked. In fact, you may believe many of these recommendations are too simple to do any good, but I promise that if you put them into action, the difference will be remarkable. Let's get started. Chapter 1. What if everything you've been told about aging is wrong? The human body is one of the most intricate and misunderstood structures in existence. Although many medical advances have been made over the past decade, healthcare practitioners are still trying to understand how each system in the body operates in unison, especially when pain and stiffness begin to affect our lives. With the power of social media and the internet, more and more bad information is out there. I want to provide you with good information so you can make better decisions about your health. Having low back, neck, shoulder, knee, or hip pain should not be a life sentence, and you shouldn't accept a lower quality of life because of it. There are a ton of false beliefs out there. Let's go through the most common ones I hear from family and friends, as well as current and past patients. Quote, being in pain is just part of getting old. I once heard a patient say, 
My doctor told me that if you're over 50 years old and you wake up without any pain, something is significantly wrong with you. Yikes. Where does this belief come from? A multitude of places. In American society, we portray aging as a negative stereotype. From birthday cards to movies, old people are made out to be weak and feeble creatures, always needing a walker or cane to get around. They are painted as forgetful, hard of hearing, constantly repeating the same story over and over again. Meanwhile, throughout our lives, we're told by our parents and grandparents how we should cherish our youth because when you get older, quote, everything hurts. Many physicians then tell us after the age of 50, being in physical pain is normal. When the media, loved ones, and physicians all promote the misconception that being in pain is just a part of getting old, it's easy to believe it's a fact of life. This negative belief can have dramatic consequences. But what if you refuse to accept this fate? What if you decided to look at aging as a privilege, as a great opportunity for increased mental and physical activity? A study done in the Journal of Gerontology found the beliefs about aging itself can have enormous effect on your quality of life. Researchers followed 433 people aged 50 and over over an 18-year period and found that those who had positive self-perceptions about aging were significantly healthier and lived on average seven and a half years longer than those with a negative self-perception about aging. The negative belief from patients and healthcare providers leads to those over the age of 50 being vastly undertreated for pain and stiffness. Many of you reading this may already have some sort of ache, pain, or stiffness. Maybe you have trouble getting out of the bed because you currently feel like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Activities that used to be simple, like putting on pants, donning a bra, or putting on a shirt, are dreadful because everything hurts. Some days are better than others, but your pain is slowly worsening and becoming more constant. And then you finally decide to see your doctor. You've always trusted your doctor. Why wouldn't you? From when you were a kid, seeing your pediatrician, to now going to your general practitioner, you've never been let down. At your physician's office, he or she listens to your story, gives you a prescription for anti-inflammatories, tells you to rest, and says to come back in six weeks if it hasn't improved. Unfortunately, you don't really know what, quote, rest means. Can you still exercise? Are you supposed to lay in bed all day? What if trying to do your favorite activity still makes your pain worse? It's all incredibly frustrating. The pain improves a bit with medications, but as soon as the pills wear off, it all comes roaring back. Six weeks pass, and you still feel the same, so now you begin to cons be concerned that the pain hasn't healed. You begin to wonder whether something more serious is going on. Am I going to need surgery? Am I always going to have to take these painkillers? Back at the doctor's office, you're told, well, you know, you aren't in your 20s anymore. This is the normal. Pause. I've heard this story or a close variation of it hundreds of times. People believe that nothing can be done to help the situation except take pills, get an injection, or go under the knife. That it's just time to accept it. That diagnosis of arthritis, osteoarthritis, or degenerative disc disease is a lifetime curse. Being in pain is not a normal part of getting older. With appropriate treatment, you can get back to golfing 18 holes, playing tennis, being active with your grandkids, walking on the beach, and traveling. There are cases of people doing extraordinary, extraordinary things well into their 50s and beyond. A few years ago, an 80-year-old hiked the top of Mount Everest. Or maybe you've heard of Ernestine Shepard. She's currently the oldest female bodybuilder at age 80, and she didn't start exercising until she was 56. As I'm writing this book, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is 85 years old, and her workout routine consists of push-ups, planks, and the bench press. I know what you're thinking, but Matt... They are all genetically gifted. The average person can't do that. If you honestly believe that, please go ahead and close this book now. My most successful patients are the ones that, whose doctors have told them nothing could be done, but who refuse to accept that answer. They strongly value their health and have specific goals to stay active and independent for as long as possible. They don't want their kids to worry about them. More importantly, they don't just want to live. They want to thrive. Quote, not all healthcare providers are created equal. Now, my goal isn't to bash on other healthcare providers, but it's critical to understand that there are good and bad practitioners out there, and it can be difficult to recognize the difference. It's similar to taking your car in to see the mechanic. If you're someone like me who can barely check their oil, you go to the mechanic without a clue of what's wrong, and you nod when he tells you the reverse main seal is leaking, pretending you know what he's talking about. You don't really know if it's true, but you trust the mechanic because he has a bunch of five-star reviews on Google and a couple plaques on the wall. Secretly, you're praying you aren't getting ripped off and going to end up on an episode of 60 Minutes. You don't really have a reason not to trust your doctor. He or she is wearing a white coat and has a ton of degrees up on the wall. It's his job to know what's best for you, right? But it's not always so simple. Most physicians are well-intentioned. We all get into medicine because we love to help people. But the current healthcare landscape makes it difficult to provide high-quality patient care. Physicians today are vastly overworked and forced to document behind a computer screen for hours each day. 
Many physicians can only provide seven or eight minutes of interaction time with their patients before they have to see the next one. Your physician is asked to make an accurate diagnosis very rapidly after asking you a few questions and doing minimal to no physical examination of your pain or injury. Forget having the time to ask all the questions you may have. Heck, Dr. House isn't even that good. He always needs a one-hour episode to solve all his patient's ailments. To give you a frame of reference, I spent at least 30 minutes to get a solid understanding and perform an examination in order to determine the root cause of your particular problem. You can see why it's easier to give the quick answer if arthritis or that it's just a part of getting older. Am I telling you that your physician is a hack and you should stop seeing him or her? Absolutely not. I have the privilege of working with some incredible primary care physicians and orthopedic specialists who help hundreds of people. I just want to bring to your attention that even if you've been let down in the past, there might be another solution for your problem. Maybe your physician has referred you to try physical therapy and you didn't get the results you were looking for. Remember, not all physical therapists and physical therapy clinics are created equal either. The story usually goes like this. You get a referral from your doctor for physical therapy. At that point, you're given a list of physical therapy clinics and you decide on one that's close to your house or has the best reviews on Google or Yelp. When you call the clinic, the very first thing they ask you on the phone is for your name, date of birth, group policy number, and your insurance card. Then they ask you what body, what body part hurts. At your first appointment, you're given 20 pieces of paper to sign and fill out. After your hand aches from all the paperwork, you finally get called, by, you get called back by a physical therapist. They seem nice enough. You talk to them for about 20 minutes while he or she types away on a computer with minimal eye contact. You do a few physical tests and are given an elementary explanation of what's going on. And before you know it, you're passed on to a college student who shows you a bunch of exercises. The next time you come in, you do 45 minutes of exercises with 12 other patients in the gym doing the exact same thing, which is bothersome because you know you can do all these exercises at home. After 45 minutes, you finally get to see the physical therapist and he or she gives you 8 to 10 minutes of time until you're put on an electric stimulation machine with an ice pack. I tell you this because I was part of the system. It's why I left it to create a business that truly focused on patients and their personal goals, not billable insurance units. Having to see 20 to 25 patients per day, every day, five days per week was a daunting task. It was increasingly difficult to give people the care they deserve when you have to bounce from person to person every 10 to 15 minutes. Similar to your primary care provider, this isn't necessarily the physical therapy clinic's fault. With insurance reimbursement dropping lower and lower, PT clinics must see more patients to cover their overhead costs. This hurts the most important person, you, the patient. If you're just given a sheet of exercises and spend an average of only 10 to 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with your physical therapist, you may not be getting the best treatment. Although there are different styles of physical therapy, I am a firm believer that exercises by themselves are never enough. There must be hands-on soft tissue work in order to correct muscle imbalances and allow the body to heal properly. The body must be viewed as a whole, the way you stand, sit, especially at work, lay in bed, lift things up off the ground, and grab items off the shelf all must be taken into consideration to truly get to the root cause of a problem. I've heard from people who have seen their chiropractor for years with the exact same back or neck problem. They continually go back just to get temporary pain relief. A chiropractor once told a friend of mine that if she doesn't keep going back for adjustments, her organs will shut down. What a claim. Have you ever turned on the news and heard, local woman age 54 dies today from organ failure due to not returning to see her chiropractor? Yeah, me neither. If your chiropractor tells you something like this, or if your chiropractor isn't always striving to get you back to your favorite activity by changing the way you move, by strengthening weak muscles or stretching tight muscles, Quote, sometimes people believe that their pain is hereditary because their mom or dad or family member had similar issues. This is also not true. Chronic pain isn't something that's passed off into your DNA from your parents or grandparents. The assumption that when you get older, you're supposed to be in pain is a false one. Like a classic car, you may need more maintenance, but pain is an automatic fact of life. Another thing I hear all the time is, quote, Matt, my MRI or x-ray shows I have arthritis or degenerative disc disease or stenosis or a herniated disc. So what can you really do to fix it? It's been ingrained in most of us that when you've had pain for a significant period of time and conservative treatment hasn't helped, an MRI is the next logical step because it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. Yet more and more research shows that MRIs and x-rays are terrible at discovering the source of your pain. In 2014, a huge research study was performed with 3,000 people without low back pain. These were completely pain-free adults aged 20 to 80 without any history of low back pain. All 3,000 subjects were given some sort of radiology, either an MRI or CT scan. Researchers found 80% of people in their 50s showed disc degeneration of their lumbar spine. Even 37% of people in their 20s had some form of disc degeneration. Disc bulge prevalence increased from 30% of those at age 20 to 84% of those at 80. Remember, not a single person had any low back pain in this study. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a rotator cuff tear. 
A patient of mine had an MRI resulting in the diagnosis of a full thickness rotator cuff tear and significant pain in his right shoulder. He went under the knife only for a surgeon uh, to find out his entire rotator cuff was normal and intact with no tear whatsoever. Or maybe you've been told you have knee arthritis and are bone on bone. Most people who are told this believe nothing can be done or they have to get a total knee replacement. Yet, many patients I work with who are diagnosed with bone-on-bone -bone arthritis can get back to walking as far as they like without pain or difficulty. So when people tell me they had an MRI or some sort of radiology done showing arthritis, rotator cuff tears, meniscus issues, degenerative disc disease, etc., it's just a tiny piece of the puzzle. Studies continue to show even people without pain have these diagnoses. What's important is how you move. How long have you had pain? Do you have significant weakness? Is your pain constant or does it come and go? All these questions must be answered to get to the root cause of your problem. The human, the human body can accomplish incredible things when you start to factor in posture, body mechanics, and the quality of your movement. Am I some sort of magician or guru? Far from it. I just believe people don't know the quality of care exists and that surgery or pills isn't the only answer. Does this mean nobody should get a total knee or hip replacement? Absolutely not. But what if you could delay the surgery for another two, three, four years? What would that mean for the quality of your life? Just remember that when you get a consult from an orthopedic surgeon, the surgeon only has a couple options. He or she can prescribe you medications, give you an injection, or cut you open to perform surgery. Many times people believe surgery is a relatively quick fix. It's just a couple hours on the operating table. How long can rehab actually take, right? Well, depending on the type of surgery and what your goals are, you're talking months to more than a year to get back to all your favorite activities. More and more studies show that for operations such as rotator cuff repairs and knee meniscus surgeries, the results are the same or even better when getting physical therapy instead of going under the knife. There is an appropriate time to get surgery, but I always recommend quality conservative treatment first. Quote, what about cortisone injections? Cortisone injections can be very useful when there's inflammation present, especially for knees, shoulders, and low backs. Parentheses, they are referred to as epidurals when injected into the low back. Unfortunately, the effects of cortisone injections tend to be temporary when you don't have a specific incident that caused your pain or injury, such as falling off a ladder or lifting something too heavy. More often than not, you may not know how your pain started. Maybe it gradually got worse with time until you finally decided to do something. Normally, when an injury start this way, it's because there is some sort of movement imbalance, meaning the way you are sitting, standing, lifting things up off the ground, or taking off your shirt is not correct and causing pain. If these movement faults aren't fixed, the cortisone injection won't matter and the pain will slowly creep back into your life. My recommendation for cortisone injections is that if you are suffering from excruciating pain, which limits your ability to sleep or walk, it's okay to get an injection. But go see a qualified healthcare specialist like a physical therapist to help make sure you keep the pain away for good so you can return to your favorite activities. Don't depend on cortisone injections every few months as your sole source for pain relief. A recent study showed receiving a cortisone injection every few months for a long period of time for knee pain has been linked to accelerating cartilage loss. All the information discussed thus far may lead you to ask the million dollar question, why is my pain or injury not healed? Understanding this is vital to improving your health. I try to explain it to each of my patients. To illustrate this, let me talk about Nicole. She was in her mid-50s and had struggled with chronic back pain for many years. It got to the point where Nicole couldn't walk or stand for more than 15 minutes because she had, pain, she had pain and a feeling of tightness going down both of her legs. Nicole has two beautiful grandchildren, and her goal was to be able to walk with her grandkids to and from school every day, which is approximately half a mile away. When you initially start having pain, you begin to move differently. No matter what part of you hurts, your body will do everything it can to avoid being in pain. For Nicole, when she walked into my clinic, I noticed she was limping mildly. She said she had been walking like that for many years without realizing it. When you limp or change the way you naturally move for long periods of time, you begin to create muscle imbalances. Some of Nicole's low back muscles had begun to shorten and tighten up. While those muscles tightened up, her glutes had become weakened. These is this issue had to be addressed or her pain would never truly go away. With Nicole, we were able to fix these muscle imbalances, mobilize her stiff joints, and allow her not to just to walk with her grandkids to school, but also train for a 5K. Your case may be different, but you shouldn't be satisfied living in pain and discomfort. There are always more options, no matter what you've been told. Quote, I've had pain for years and have tried everything. Nothing can be done. I hear something along these lines almost every day. Normally it's from people who have done injections, pain pills, physical therapy, chiropractic, acupuncture, etc., but are still being limited by pain or stiffness. This belief causes people to feel hopeless and stuck. It leads them to live a lesser quality of life than they deserve. Just because you've tried some things and were let down doesn't mean you're doomed. I tell patients with this belief that even if your problem can't be 100% solved, what if, what if it could improve by 10%, 20%, 30%? Wouldn't that be worth your time? What would it mean for your quality of life if you could spend 15 to 20 more minutes walking with a loved one? 
to be able to go upstairs with significantly less pain, to get a bra on and off without pure agony, to bend over to put on shoes without fear. There's always something that can be done. It starts by reading books like this one. Just by reading this, you are someone who is motivated to improve their quality of life, someone who is strong, someone who strongly values their health, someone who is looking for answers. That's more than half the battle. You're going to keep trying everything you can to live the happiest and most active life you can. If you understand these false beliefs and the mistakes commonly made, you can avoid them and work on getting your energy and life back. Now let's keep going. So that's the end of uh, chapter one right there. So again, that's my book, Aging Smarter, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Most Active and Healthy Life After 50. It is available on Amazon. Uh, you can just type in Aging Smarter. It'll be the first result that pops up if you're interested in more. Um, I dive into things that lead into the common mistakes that people make. I talk about back pain, knee pain, uh, nutrition, common fitness uh, mistakes people make after the age of 50, uh, what quality healthcare actually looks like, all kinds of topics like that. So so if you are interested, please go over to Amazon, get yourself a copy. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys found that helpful and I hope you guys have an enjoyable, awesome 2019. I'm going to try and get one more episode in before the end of the year, but if not, uh, I hope you guys have a happy holiday season and a safe holiday seasons with your friends and loved ones. And I look forward to the next episode. Have a good one. Take care guys. Thank you for listening to the Stay Healthy San Diego podcast brought to you by Parker Physio. If your pain is preventing you from staying healthy and active and you'd like to avoid surgery, painkillers, or just want to get back to doing the things you love in and around San Diego, we offer both a free ebook and free over-the-phone consultation to help you figure out the root cause of your pain and the next best steps for resolving it. Find our ebooks online at parkerphysio.com forward slash health dash tips. There you'll find ebooks for topics such as low back pain, sciatica, shoulder pain, knee pain, and neck pain. These quick to read reports will provide you with expert tips, tricks, and exercises to help solve your pain from the comfort of your own home. Just visit parkerphysio.com forward slash health dash tips to download your ebook and have it delivered directly to your inbox. We also offer free, no obligation telephone consultations with the doctor of physical therapy to residents of San Diego. Just call us at 858-900-3361 or visit us at parkerphysio.com and click the talk to a PT on the phone button. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Stay Healthy San Diego podcast.